Good afternoon, I guess. Uh, our devotion today is on 1 Peter 1, 8-10. It's the same text that uh, we read on Friday's devotion, but we have a different emphasis today. There's a lot in these verses. So 1 Peter 1, 8-10. Though you have not seen him... Oh, sorry. 1 Peter 1, 10-12. Wrong, wrong set of verses. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied about the grace that was to be yours searched and inquired carefully, inquiring what person or time the Spirit of Christ in them was indicating when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the subsequent glories. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves, but you in the things that have now been announced to you through those who preach the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. This time of year, there are a lot of people very interested in making predictions, of course. March Madness officially begins tomorrow, and millions of people will fill out brackets just like this. Here's mine. It's not filled out yet. I'm still trying to decide who I think is going to win some of these matchups and different things like that. Millions of people will fill out brackets just like that and will watch eagerly to see what will come to pass. They'll cheer. Some will exult in a buzzer-beating three-pointer, and others will go home dejected. Peter paints a very similar picture in our text. Notice this one little line. Things into which angels long to look. The things he is talking about are the things of Christ. His sufferings and the glory that will follow. Essentially, he's talking about what we focus on in the seasons of Lent and then Easter. The passion and the subsequent glory of our Savior. Those are the things that the prophets foretold, just as Jesus says to the Emmaus disciples that the things that were written about him in the Psalms and the prophets, how he was necessary for him to die and for him to rise and for uh, repentance and remission of sins to be preached in his name to all nations. Some people, when they fill out their brackets, some people do so in a pretty willy-nilly fashion. Some literally use fashion to determine their choice. For instance, my wife will make her picks based on uniform color and style, and I've heard of other people doing the same thing. Not so with the prophets. Peter says that they who prophesied about these things, who predicted what would be, searched and inquired carefully to find out what exactly was going to happen to Jesus and what it would mean for us. These are the things which the angels longed to look into. As the passion of Christ unfolded, the angels looked on. They knew the prophecies and watched with bated breath as they were unfolded in the person of Christ. They looked down with sad and wondering eyes to see the approaching sacrifice. They heard, perhaps confused, as Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They looked on. They looked on Jesus as he spoke with those final words, It is finished and died. They watched as he rose from the dead, the greatest buzzer beater, as it were, of all time. Peter pictures them as if they were fans in the stands, all on their feet or at home, on the edge of the couch. And, they, and so they are. For they are certainly fans of what God has done for our human race in Christ Jesus, and they still long to look into these things. They come and look on on Sundays when Christ is present in word and sacrament. They join with us as we sing, Holy, 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 and glory to God in the highest. They cover their faces in reverence, yet perhaps peeking through as the body and blood of Christ is given to his people, as the Lamb is present. They rejoice as God works out his salvation, as he brings comfort to hurting souls, as he turns sinners from their way. They rejoice at every soul which through God's buzzer-beating power, through the gospel, is brought to life eternal out of the clutches of death. And we may share their joy this Lent and Easter season. We may join in watching with bated breath as Christ goes to conquer sin, death, and hell. We may weep with those who weep, and then jump and sing for joy at the sudden and complete victory of Easter morning. We may, we may dance forever in his victory. For unlike the victor that will be crowned at the end of the basketball tournament, this victory will never end, will never be challenged, will never fade. And so as our uh, gradual from this last Sunday and for the whole Easter season says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. He is the thing into which angels long to look, the salvation that he gives to us. Let's be fans of that.